fue así. No, mano. Good afternoon, members. We will commence in the next one minute. In the next one minute, we will commence. Minister, as well as the HOD, as well as the entities for the Department of Community Safety, to those that are tuning in via YouTube, as well as all our other guests and officials in MS teams today. This is a meeting for the Department of 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 Cultural Affairs and Sport, and we are here to discuss the Western Cape appropriation adjustment for the third adjustment as well as the appropriation bill. It is now 2.01, the 17th on a Wednesday, and I duly open the meeting. We are seeing more and more guests are still arriving, but welcome to be Welcome to the committee meeting. Thank you for your attendance here. The month of March is commonly known as an extremely busy month and you availing yourself to be here is highly appreciated. I will allow members of the committee to introduce themselves for the record. Thereafter, I will note the minister and the HOD for introductory comments and also for the HOD to then um, to then um, state which officials are in the meeting as well as the entity representatives. Over to the members for the introductions. Good afternoon, Chairperson. I just want to allude you to that you have welcomed community safety, but we have the officials of DKS, uh, Lorraine Boeta, Chair, uh, Lorraine Boeta, thank you. Thank you, member. Okay, can I come in? Okay, my, my name is, is Man from Google, the Chairperson of Heritage Western Cape. Members, let me again state, thank you, Member Bota. This is the Standing Committee on Community Safety, Cultural Affairs and Sport. The segment we are dealing with today is for Cultural Affairs and Sport. I will allow members of the Member Bota for members of the committee to introduce themselves. Thereafter, the minister and the HOD, and the HOD will then highlight which officials are in the meeting, and then for the chairpersons of the relevant entities, for them to then introduce themselves. I trust that that is clear. Thank you so much for your cooperation and for each and every one for being in attendance today. Over to the rest of the members. Good afternoon, Chairperson and colleagues. My name is Gillian Bosman and I'm a member of this committee. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairperson, to the committee and to other colleagues. My name is Ayanda Barnes. I see Member Pet Lecker is also in attendance. Are you there, ma'am? Yes, I am here, Chairperson. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you for your attendance here today. I'll now hand over to the department. Um, 
Good afternoon, Chairperson. I'm not sure if the minister is on. Um, can't see the minister at this at this time. Uh, but maybe we just uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Brent Walters. Uh, I'm the HOD for DCAS uh, until 31st March 2021 at 12 midnight. <laughs> Someone. Um, <laughs> are you able I, to state which officials are with you today? Yes. HOD? So we've got, I'm just going to go down the alphabetical listing on the side. We've got Ms. Brenda Ratkes, who is the CFO. Ms. Cecilia Sani, Director of Libraries. Uh, Ms. Colette my Head of Heritage. Mr. Dion Berger is the Head of my Office. Mr. Guy Redman is the Chief Director for Cultural Affairs. Mr. Eamon van der Beste is in. He is from the Minister's Office, Head of the Minister's Office. And we've got Ms. Jacqueline Bull. She is a Chief Director in charge of the After School uh, Program. Jay Mulaleki, Director of uh, um, Arts and Culture. Mr. Lawanda Natamo, he is working with the CFO, the CFO is in charge of budgets. Uh, uh, Advocate Lyndon Bower, he's the Chief Director for Sport and Recreation. Mr. Michael Janssen van Rensburg, he's uh, um, from the Acting Director for Heritage Museums and Geographical Names. Uh, Mr. Mazadin Kayo, he's the Director for Archives. Mr. Paul Hendricks, Director for uh, Sport Development. Mr. Sean Julie is the Director of Strategic Operational Management. And then I see Ms. Stacey McLean. She is a uh, communications person for the for the MEC. Mr. Tabo Tutu, the Director of uh, uh, Sport Promotion. And those are the people that I see from outside, Chairperson. Thank you. And then I think there is a um, Heritage Western Cape. Mr. Redmond, can you just guide me on Heritage Western Cape, please? Uh, thanks, HOD. Uh, Advocate Mzulu is in the meeting for Heritage Western Cape. He's the chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. HOD, thank you so much. We have a couple of days still with you and ours, so we highly appreciate it. The, um, the year 2020 was an extremely difficult time for many people. We've seen how those in the sport and arts and culture sector also suffered significantly due to COVID-related um, situations that they found themselves in, but we have a full house here today, and I firmly believe that that is testimony to the work that is undertaken by the department. So thank you to all the officials for your attendance here. Once again, to all the members, um, to our procedural officer, Mr. Wasim Matthews, did we receive any official apologies from any other members? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Good afternoon to everyone. Chairperson, there has been no other apologies rendered aid of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much. All um, the attendance has been registered and captured. In terms of the rules of engagement for virtual Chair. meetings. Chair. Yeah. My hand is raised. I will I will note you now, Member Vance. Okay, I just wanted to make an apology. In fact, it's not an apology because of um uh, low chatting. Uh, member Kama and Member Van Vogel will be joining us late. They might be here anytime soon, so it's not that they are absent. They will be here shortly. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, we've also been stuck in various stages um, with regard to, to low chatting. Thank you for highlighting that. That has been captured, Member Barnes. In terms of the engagement for today, I will merely refer members to the ATC directives for the 17th of April 2020, which uh, which speaks to how to conduct the virtual meetings. It is now nine minutes past two, and we are about to get to to get into the the purpose for today. And as members and the department would be aware, we are discussing today the Western Cape Third Adjustments Appropriation Bill, as well as vote 13 in the schedule of the Western Cape Appropriation Bill for 2021. Members, I would also draw your attention that we have a slot available on the 24th of March. However, we will attempt today in order to consider both our reports during our deliberations. 
I trust that you all find that in order. I will, um, I will now hand over directly uh, um, to the minister if she is on already or to the HOD and afford them the opportunity to make any introductory remarks with regard to the Western Cape Third Adjustment Appropriation Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to point out the minister sent me an SMS to say that she's still waiting to be accepted into the meeting, so I'm not sure whether there's some, some issue there for to get into the meeting. Maybe some one of the officials can perhaps just follow up on that. Uh, uh, Jody, may I request, um, and with the indulgence of the committee, is um, if IT is able to call in the minister, and we could potentially give it a minute. Yes. Just so that we get the flow correct here today. Let me just indicate to her. Um, Mr. Matthews, I see your hand. Uh, Chairperson, uh, we have requested IT to just get in contact with the minister. Um, it's just a technical issue. She should be in shortly. So. Thank you so much. Members, I trust that you will indulge me as we just give the minister a couple of seconds still for that minute as she's about to log in. We are dealing with the Western Cape Third Adjustment Appropriation Bill. Members have received the relevant documentation via the clerk of the Western Cape Provincial Parliament. Members would be aware of the page numbers as well. In vote 13, specifically to the third adjustment estimates, that ranges from pages 73 to 81. Directly after the minister's introductory remarks, as well as the HOD's remarks, I will table vote 13 for the third adjustment estimates. We will deliberate. Thereafter, we will go into the 21 budget, the appropriations, then we will deal with those pages. But I will then afford for introductory comments again from the minister as well as the HOD specific to that budget vote, but also for the entities, the chairpersons, if they wish to make any comment at that stage. Wasim, is the minute up? Chief, um, thank you. I'm in. I'm in. Thank you so much. <laughs> Minister, it's lovely hearing your voice. Thank you, and I trust that you feel welcomed. Members, I will now hand over to the Minister for introductory remarks. Thank you, Chairperson. Good afternoon to the department as well as the standing committee. That's the most important um, partner today. I just want to start to say in the, in the introduction of the Provincial Economic Review and Outlook 2020, the author writes, the year 2020 will be remembered as the great lockdown. Today is almost a year when we went in a complete lockdown, a standstill, a shock and an almost unbelievable state of mind and state of affairs. It was devastating for our sector and still is. But slowly but surely we are coming back, commencing to our activities in sport and culture. We've seen over the weekend that our sport fraternities without spectators were very busy in all of the six districts in um, Western Cape. And then the Zabalasa festival is they did the um, preliminary um, uh, events and it will start on the 19th of March is the opening and it commences for the, until the 26th of March is the Zabalasa festival. Also, with limited um, spectators and all protocol in um, re COVID in order. And as DCAS, we have the mandate embedded in our constitution to bring about social cohesion, inclusion, a sense of belonging, dignity, and well being of our communities. 
and I'm looking forward to our deliberations this afternoon. Thank you, Jay. Thank you so much, Minister HOD. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson and members of the committee. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, may, maybe just on the third adjusted, adjusted estimates to indicate uh, Chairperson is, I think the committee is sharply aware. Uh, we were probably amongst the worst affected department uh, in terms of the COVID-19 lockdown. And the reason we were affected badly by COVID-19 is because our business is about bringing people together, social cohesion and social inclusion. But our response to COVID-19 was about driving people apart. So if you go on, if you look through the various directions that came out, the various lockdown levels uh, that came out, you will see that our stuff was always brought back very haltingly and in fact never ever brought back completely. And uh, lots of conditions in relation uh, to our things because clearly, uh, because we are, we are in the business of bringing people together and the disease uh, is driving people, the disease basically the way to combat it is driving people apart. So so therefore, just to, to give that as a background to say that um, it obviously would have, have, have had an impact on us being able to spend our budget. And for this third adjustment estimate, we surrendered 19.626 million, of which 13.504 million was approved for reallocation in the 2021-2022 financial year. Uh, if you take the difference between those two figures of 5.722 million, it's mainly in the compensation of employees, 3.459 million, and goods and services, uh, 2.263 million, related to advertising, catering, and so on, all which relates mainly to postponed events or cancelled events that you couldn't execute. And then for the 13.504, that we, uh, as part of that 19 million that we surrendered for reallocation for the coming year, it should do with the uh, broadband library connection, 1.367 million. And that budget was impacted due to data lines that could not be installed in public libraries and library infrastructure projects that were delayed due to the closure of libraries as a result of COVID-19. Then we've got ECM advanced electronic signatures, 2.422 million. There was delay in the finalization of the procurement of uh, what's called the advanced electronic signature by CETA. Then there's Sassaria compliance of Lippi Stadium of 4 million rand. The delays were due to COVID-19. Then we know also that we had uh, no uh, minstrel festival at the end of last year, and uh, that impacted on them. So basically what that means is a reallocation for what's going to happen in the year coming. And then in the after school uh, program and case for sport is a GBS amount of 4.7 million, 715 million. The GBS uh, allocation could not be fully spent due to the various COVID-19 related restrictions that impacted on the school sport environment. So Chairperson, that's just our third, uh, third adjustment. So it's an amount of 19.626 million. And I think we present it to you. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you so much, HOD and Minister, for your introductory remarks. We are always reminded by the HOD that culture and art and sport affects each and every person within the Western Cape. I remember the minister mentioned the Zabalaza festival four years ago or three years ago. I formed part of the festival and I've heard many good stories how the festival help and assist those in the art fraternity with their development. So thank you so much members. What I will do now is I will table the third adjustment appropriation bill. We will then take a round of questions and input from members. Please kindly also remember that that committee meetings dealing with appropriations are considered public meetings. So we will also afford the public if they wish to do so to engage with the department. So once again, thank you to the introductory comments. I will now table vote 13 in the third adjustment estimates. Pages, the vote is pages 73 until 81. I will table 73 until 78, including the introductory remarks by the HOD and the minister. 
do we have a round of questions based on the introductory remarks together with the first pages as indicated? Member Ayanda Barnes, I, I note your hand. Thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Thank you to the Minister and to the HOD for coming to talk to us today. Um, my question actually is not on a page. It's more a, a question that seeks guidance. I've been trying to look into my book as to find out about what happened to AP, APPs. I can't see any budget or something showing a report about APPs. Why are APPs not included? What could be the reason for that? Or am I missing it somewhere in the book? If I can just get an answer on that. Thank you, Chair. Member Bosman, I note your hand. Chair, my question, my answer might be able to assist Member Barnes. The APPs were sent in a separate ATC to members. I mean, that was emailed to all of us. That is duly noted. Member Barnes, we have via the clerk received a number of APPs as well as the various bills. The third adjustment as well as the bill, there is two blue books, um, which we commonly refer to as the blue book. But I note your hand, Member Barnes. I'm covered then, Chair. I will accept as I have not read it because I have been looking for that one specific. Thank you, Chair. Members, allow me to table the entire vote for 13, the third adjustment estimates, pages 73 all the way to 81, including the annexures. Do we have any questions based on the input received as well as the introductory remarks for the entire vote 73 to 81. <coughs> Member Bosman, I note your hand. Chair, I don't have a specific question, but I just want to maybe respond to the opening remarks and in general and just say thank you to the officials from this department. Um, who've worked very hard um, and this is the third um, time this year that they've had an adjusted budget. We know it's very difficult for officials and for entities to plan when they don't have a clear um, certainty in terms of how much money is available. But we do appreciate the work that's being done by this department to make sure that children are still able to access some form of sports through organized sports, that cultural bodies are still able to deliver some services and we welcome the news that the archives are now also going to be fully digital because we know that will go a long way in ensuring um, that access to these services are, are open. And we also we're very grateful that this is the one department that always comes with a large contingent and they always answer all of our questions. So we thank the minister and the outgoing HOD for that work um, in this year, which has been specifically very difficult for all employees um, in this department. Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Bosman. I will echo your sentiments we've seen over since we were elected, how the department creates the conditions where young people are able to access and uh, participate, not only in the talent identification, but also in their skills development. Members, I trust that for the third adjustment, there's no further comment. I will now open it up to the public. Is there any member of the public wishing to engage the department around the third adjustment appropriation bill? I've tabled the entire vote 1373 to 81. Mm. 
I see no hand. Members. I trust that we are able to move forward in this regard. Like I stated earlier on, we will create an opportunity within our times today in order to consider and adopt our reports in this regard. I see Ms. Mr. Mandla, your screen is flicking. Flicking. Uh, I don't know. I was, it doesn't show anything from my side. Is this still flicking? flicking? Yeah, uh, it's more stable now, uh, but okay, that's the OK. Hope, Thank you okay, so much. Let's hope that you will remain stable. Thank you so much, members. We have considered and we have engaged and we've received comment from members regarding the third adjustment appropriation bill. During our deliberations, we will then adopt our report in that regard. Uh, we have afforded members of the public for input as well. I will now go straight over to tabling uh, before I table um, vote 13 in the schedule of the Western Cape Appropriation Bill, I will again note the minister, as well as the HOD, as well as any entity chairperson, if they wish to make any introductory remarks specific to the bill that we are dealing with now. Over to you, minister. Thank you, Chair. Now, no, nothing specific from my side. Just I want to thank all the the members of our free entities. It wasn't an uh, easy year, but you've really excel in all of your endeavors towards our department and towards your, um, you know, towards what you want to do for us in the province. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister. HOD. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, maybe just from just from our side, it's just by way of introduction, short introduction, to say that you've got the 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 uh, EPO, the blue book, as you commonly call the blue book, and uh, essentially it shows if we were to go strictly by the blue book, that basically what that document is saying that the department's budget has increased by 20.34 percent. Obviously, that's not taking into account that we've had third, three adjustments. So we'd like to sort of believe that. We look at what was originally allocated to us. We were forced to give up money in, in various stages in the course of uh, the 2021 financial year, as you're of course aware, and we just we just went through a portion of that now. Uh, many things outside of our control. And when we look at that uh, in real terms, when we, when we go from our baseline of 932 compared to the amount now that we've been given of 897, then um, in, in real terms, uh, when we start comparing we believe it's a, a minus 3.7% net reduction inside the budget for the sector. Obviously, there are many reasons, uh, Chairperson, as you of course uh, know, and I think the committee is aware, but I think we just wanted to give it, we do have the detail of those, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I'm open, we are open to, to questions in relation to that, but Chairperson, just to say that, even though, I think the main point we want to make in the opening remarks is even though, if you read it strictly, after adjustments, it's looking like an increase, of 20 percent it isn't actually an increase in in effect it's a net decrease because uh, through circumstances we were forced to actually give up funding as you know as the year went on uh 2020 20, 20 and 1920 sorry, 2020 and 2021 thank you <laughs> thank you so much hod is there any of the entities that wish to make any comment at this time I see no hand in that regard. Members, I will now table vote 13 in the schedule to the Western Cape Appropriation Bill 2021. Those page numbers are indicated in the second book, um, in the second blue book, ranging from pages 693 until 750. 693 till 750. We will take the first 10 pages, 693 until 703.
I see member Bos, uh, member Bota, member Barnes. In that order. And member Kama. Thank you, Chair. I don't have a specific page that I'm asking the question on. I just wanted to check with the HOD in regard to the um, actual decrease, as um, I have also read it, um, and in regard to what he is saying, what is the department, what's the innovations that department is going to embark on to um, um, deliver on the mandate in regard to um, communities, if the HOD can speak to that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Member Bota. Member Barnes. Thank you, Chairperson. My question is on page 694, under demands and changes in services during 2021-22, the department will focus on service delivery to the people of the Western Cape guided by the provincial and departmental strategic plan with particular emphasis on the following. In line, the chair, in line with the vision of the department, what work is done to fight the demon of racism in the province and to foster a social, inclusive, active and connected Western Cape? My second question, chair, will be on page 696, budget decisions. The work of the department is primarily aligned to VIP, safe, cohesive communities. The, effective, the effects of coronavirus had significant social and economic impacts on the social sector that we serve. What I want to know, Chair, is regarding the economic impact of COVID-19 on, on livelihoods of artists and athletes, and bearing in mind the possibility of a third or maybe a fourth wave, I would like to understand how much is allocated for the relief fund to support the artists and the athletes. Now, on page on page 703, <laughs> under the review of the current financial year, the last sentence on the third paragraph, the Literary Arts Development Program has seen the rollout of its senior citizen storytelling program and emerging writers program focused on developing aspirant writers and educators. What I want to know, Chair, is whether the literary arts development program is also aimed at improving literacy levels among school-going children. If not, can the department consider partnering with the Western Cape Education Department in this regard? Also, how much is budgeted for this program? Also, Chair, what I want to know is which way or, or, or how one can access this kind of program, taking into cognizance one can see clearly in our townships, for example, in Guguletu, there's this Lumkile, Lumkile's book joint that also attracts people to come and read. How are programs like that supported by the department, including the artists that are in rural areas in your Maryville, that I know they are good writers, that, but at some point you are asking yourself, how do they get access or support uh, from the department, seeing that here it is clearly highlighted that there are funds available to assist them in that regard. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Barnes. Member Kama? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair, and greetings to you and the department. Uh, apologies for being late, Chair. I, I entered a wrong uh, uh, link uh, for the meeting, but my my first question, Chair, is on page 694 as well, um, on the demands and the changes in services. I think in the last paragraph, if we, we check at the last sentence where it says, through the provision of this intervention, the department will go a long way in creating safer communities and empower sport federations and netball uh, fraternity. Now, my, I, I want to understand, uh, uh, Chair, here, and linking this to uh, what was promised in terms of the um, uh, the safety plan of the premier, when he said that certain uh, departments will play critical uh, 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 roles in addressing other aspects, and I believe this is part of the department that has a huge role to play in that. Uh, so I want to understand, uh, uh, Chair, as to uh, how 
how will the department now respond to, uh, uh, in terms of, because we say here we're going to support federations and all that, but uh, are we going to have any uh, targeted approach in terms of identifying uh, the, the, the areas uh, of the high mega uh, rate, or is, is there a certain budget that is uh, uh, earmarked for these uh, uh, particular areas where we need to really make the 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 the, 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 the impact. And and second to that, chair, I also want to understand. Um, I, I would have, I would imagine how the 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 lockdown has affected preparations of the Netball World Cup, and and if we can uh, get the extent of uh, 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 that, chair. And, and perhaps what work is being done uh, for the Netball World Cup this year and how much is budgeted for, for it in this financial year. Uh, if we can also in that chair get an update on the on the uh, on uh, an update with regarding to the to the uh, to the legacy project. Uh, I know it, it asks a lot a lot this question. Um, but the other question that I have chair, uh, is on page uh, six hundred. I mean seven hundred and five. Uh, program three uh, on your library and archive services. Uh, there's a there's a sentence where they, they, it says the infrastructure projects funded by the community library li libraries conditional grant were delayed due to the lockdown regulations and the closure of the sector. Uh, and my question would be, what are the details of the projects that were affected by this? And what happened to the earmarked uh, funds, and how much is budgeted for these projects this financial year? I'll stop there for now, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Member Kama. You jumped the book by two pages. However, we are here to engage. We are on pages until 7.03. However, um, that one will be allowed for this round. Thank you so much. I now note Member Bosman. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, my question is on page 709, um, and it's around the um, department's role in library and library funding. Um, if the department can, can perhaps just elaborate a bit more on how they are looking at um, furthering the assistance to municipalities, especially rural municipalities that are currently struggling to manage libraries, and if there are any changes in the way libraries are being managed in the province. Um, we know that they fund uh, B3 municipalities um, fully. Um, most B3 municipalities are being funded fully, but we know that this is something with um, it's constantly got a financial uh, pressure on it, specifically also around libraries being vandalized and burnt down by communities during service delivery protests. If the department can perhaps just expand on whether that line item um, is going to be um, a problem um, with the ever escalating costs, and then if we could also just get an update on the implementation of the rural library connectivity project in terms of um, making sure that libraries are connected to the um, internet and to other infrastructure in communities such as uh, the mod centers and the um, um, the centers that and I can't remember the name of it now for the life of me um, that the premier's department operates as well. And then my next question is on the enterprise um, content management. Um, I just I note that in the APPs, they also speak about the enhancements that are being made to um, the enterprise content management system um, in order to um, create more functionality. Um, my assumption is that that increased functionality is going to come with increased cost, and I was wondering if the HOD could perhaps just speak to um, whether those costs are going to only escalate in this year or whether it's going to be conti a continued um, increase. Thanks, Jay. Thank you so much, Member Bosman. HOD, I trust that you've captured those questions. Um, some of the questions would be beyond the first 10 pages, yes. but I trust with your expertise, you've been able to capture those. Um, if I can add to the questions on 696 with regard to, to youth unemployment and the department placing itself at the heart of, of plans to, to contribute to the reduction of unemployment 
uh, within the province. Um, are we able to hear more regarding the partnership agreements? Are those partnership agreements in place already with donors and NGOs and government schools, etc., um, um, in order to address the social and, and economic challenges that we do face? But also um, on that specific page, it's made reference to the department um, that despite the fiscal challenges, uh, there's a decrease of 42.8 million in the compensation of employees' budget. Um, does does that mean it um, um, it relates to to staff that's no longer with the department? If I can just get an understanding in that regard. But thank you so much. Over to the department. Thank you very much, Chair. We will try and answer answer the questions. Maybe just to start uh, with the last question that you asked, and then I'm gonna. We we'll have to spread the questions around because different people are going to answer. But maybe just to say that when we have a decrease in the COE, that would be uh, remember we all had to do reductions of posts. Uh, I'm going to use the word frozen. So in other words, we're keeping them on ice for a while. So there is a de that decrease in terms of compensation of employees relates to that. But it doesn't mean that any warm bodies or that we're letting any warm bodies go. I just wanted to make that point uh, just in relation to that. Chair, if I can go back to the question that was questions that were asked, uh, firstly by Ms. Puerta. She asked what innovations. There's a small decrease that we have indicated. Now, I think if we were to look at for innovation, I think we just need to look at what our sport colleagues, museum colleagues, and library colleagues, archive colleagues did in this year to make sure that the business could actually operate. So it's in that spirit of innovation that whatever budget we, we uh, get given, we will make it uh fit according to the size that we have been given especially in the programs that involve uh expansion of like uh, let's say coaching programs or uh, reading programs and so on what happens is that in a department like ours if the budget is shrunk it means we can we can do less of something and not more of various things and we know that we do need more um so i'm, I'm confident that the staff will have the innovation to be able to come up with um, various programs in the various sections, uh, even with COVID and without COVID. So, so having said that, I think maybe just to go to member bonds, uh, there are there were four questions on member bonds. Um, the first one was on racism, and I'm going to just maybe just talk about that. Uh, I will address that with you, Lennon and Guy. Can get just get ready to talk about the relief fund. That would be good, uh, the various ones that they are, are doing. And then just in terms of the literary, literary arts, um, if um, Guy, if you can perhaps just talk talk about that. And then Jackie, um, if there's anything in relation to the, to the literacy program that has been mentioned specifically for schools, maybe you can just talk about what you're doing inside the Yabo program. We didn't take it member by member, but uh, maybe let's just first to say I think I, what I do want to say, Chairperson, is that the entire fundamental being of our department and the premise on what on, on how we are uh, basing ourselves is in the vision statement, in uh, two words in that vision statement. The two words in the vision statement that say what the department is about are the word social inclusion. So we look at, you know, the society has many things which pull, pull us apart on very many lines. Um, the member mentioned race, which is one of them, but there's economy, there's uh, religion, there's, there's many, many things, there's language, there's, there's many, many things. So having recognized that we have this diversity inside our uh, population, we are looking at that diversity as something that can actually strengthen and unite us rather than divide us. So all our programs are with an with a eye to how do we actually bring people together? How do we bring people together from different backgrounds? Uh, if you look at any program and take, take any program that we're doing, you'll see that uh, this department's work runs the geographic depth and breadth of this province. It uh, touches people from every economic background. It touches people from every religious background and so on. So I'm, I'm confident, Chairperson, that uh, the work that we do start to straddle those divides and start to pull the bonds of unity between our people that we know need to be there. So with that, I'm going to hand over to perhaps uh, starting off with Guy and then Lyndon can follow and then Jackie first and then we will assign the others. Thank you in that order. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you, HOD. 
Uh, just to add to HRD's input, we, we have uh, programs in our museums to address uh, matters around racism, uh, programs that help us to unite around our national symbols, and it's, on, it's one of our APP targets, uh, which is, which is um, uniting around our flag. Uh, and this happens in all our museums around the Western Cape, so that because of these many things that tend to highlight our differences as HOD has spoken about, there are the other things that we ought to unite around, such as our national symbols and the, and the flag as a symbol goes beyond culture, it goes into sports and everything. We also have a very strong uh, uh, language program because we are trying to get people to move towards multilingualism, uh, to get excited about learning new, new languages, because it's when we understand each other's languages that we begin to understand each other's cultures and appreciate each other better. And then we have the community conversations, which is also in the, an, an APP target, where we go to various communities and have these very open, robust, frank conversations with the communities, and race is always one of the issues that comes up. With respect to the uh, relief fund, um, just to give you a sense, uh, in this year, we were able to make available 6.9 million in relief, and that was split between arts and culture, museums, and libraries. It's 4.5 million uh, in the arts and culture space. Museums uh, were able to provide relief to struggling museums uh, to the value of 1.3 million, and libraries 1.1 million to assist various municipalities with uh, uh, COVID readiness, um, PPE, etc., all around COVID to support them. But what is not visible is the support we provided to arts and culture organizations, which is part of our annual funding uh, program. Uh, and here we made available 11 million, uh, seven of which went towards our professional organizations. And uh, just around up, just before, I'd say 4.9 million, yeah, 4.9 million went towards NGOs. So this, this is uh, not very visible, but this was happening throughout the course of the year and managed to keep a lot of organizations which were facing challenges of closure to be open uh, and, and those organizations are still functioning and they've applied to our new call which went out late last year around November and closed last week Friday. So that arts funding program this year has got 20 million allocated to it. So we're going to continue funding the arts organizations which are all go much deeper into the uh, um, regions that we could ever do and reach more people than we could ever do and and the focus this year is over and above the arts organizations themselves is going to be on recovery we've allocated some funds towards um, supporting the gig economy because the majority of our artists are, are freelancers um, and when there are no gigs they don't get paid it's as simple as that and now that they are starting out they do not have any capital to even book venues to start out so this is going to be a, a venue support fund which will allow them to be able to book venues if the venue is available for free from a municipality that we can negotiate to book sound, et cetera, so just to assist with logistics to try and get them to recover. Um, and then it will also have an, an element that focuses on, on, on the arts organizations themselves. And like I said, the call closed last week and a lot of organizations applied. At the end of the, <clears throat> the day when it, when it closed last week, we had over 300 applications. On the literary side, it's interesting that Member Barnes speaks of, of, of Lumkile Book Joint. I was chatting to him just last week, uh, and he's one of our applicants. He's applied for support. He's doing a great job. Uh, it's a wonderful initiative and all driven by a, a, a member of the community with his own strength. So it's definitely an initiative that we are looking to support, and he's officially applied to, for support from the department. And there are other initiatives in our libraries that focus on literacy, and HOD has alluded to also to the after-school program through the Yebonias program, which focuses on exactly what uh, Member Barnes is, uh, Barnes is talking about, about literacy development in school-going kids. Um, I think I've covered all the, the questions from my side, HOD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. Uh, Lyndon? Good afternoon, Chair, and good afternoon, members. Um, thank you, uh, HD. Um, there's a number of questions 
relating to the legacy of the Netball World Cup as well as also the relief fund. So no, I will no, no, let me just, start. Let me, let me just let me just interrupt you. I just just uh, let me let me assign the others quickly. Then we know that you will also answer uh, just in relation to Netball World Cup. And you specifically, I think there was also a question about the update on the legacy project. If you can answer that, and if Cecilia can answer the question on libraries that were asked, uh, the library question. Um, changes in the way libraries are being managed. Are we doing that? If Cecilia can just uh, speak about that and also the implementation of the Rural Library Connectivity Project. The Maza can then speak also about uh, ECM and uh, um, the, the question on ECM that came on ECM. And if Jackie could please uh, address the question of youth employment with donors and NGOs in the answers and then anything we left out, we will sweep up at the end, uh, Chairperson. And then let me end straight back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, HOD. Uh, thank you so much, HOD. We will miss you, yes, sir. Over mm -hmm. to the department again. Thank you, uh, HOD. And uh, yeah, so um, the first one is just to talk about the relief. Uh, within the sport domain, we had a provincial relief fund of 1 million rand. And uh, that has uh, successfully been given to 127 federations and individuals that applied, uh, worked through a process, and we had uh, an independent committee that uh, assigned uh, the, the funding to the qualifying uh, federations and individuals. Uh, we are concluding on that process now in this week, and uh, we will then be working together with national. National in turn also had in November this year a second relief fund uh, to which we assisted uh, in that relief fund members of the uh, community where the Western Cape could apply to on the national funding because national made a, a second set of relief funding available for that. Uh, we we uh, assisted by sending out all the application forms and making sure that all the sport federations and uh, various officials receive that information so that they can apply as they needed to apply directly to, to national. So we were uh, assisted by the Western Cape Provincial Sport Confederation and between their, their contact list, our contact list, uh, we managed to get everybody on board and uh, there were people that applied uh, to national uh, for relief as well. Then in the uh, in the second instance, we also assisted as per our normal funding with transfer funding to over 125 sport uh, federations in the Western Cape. And uh, in fact, we're busy with the last three or four federations this week as the people conclude on their audited financial statements as well as the AGM minutes. They are then entitled to receive the funding. And we have also, similar to Mr. Redman and, and the culture sector, uh, we have now sent that funding to the sport department, to the sport federations, in order to keep them going as well. The second question uh, uh, related to sport uh, was about the netball World Cup uh, during the the COVID period uh, that that we were in, particular. Level five and four, we started off with the virtual meetings where city of Cape Town uh, as the host city, the provincial government represented by uh, our team, uh, as well as national had monthly meetings. And at these monthly meetings, we were able to, to, to do quite a few things. Uh, one of the first aspects is that the, the board, the Netball World Cup board was uh, established and was founded um, by, the, by the legal department of national. So that uh, went off and, and that board is now registered and they will have their first meeting uh, in a week's time. Uh, then secondly, um, there were 37 million rand in total that has been set aside um, for the, in this financial year. And uh, the third Thirty million, uh, thirty million has been transferred to the uh, to the National uh, Netball Association, and they and the board will uh, then uh, roll out now in the second quarter, uh, the first quarter of the new year. Uh, in terms of the province, we uh, had funding that we sent to the following municipalities. The city of Cape Town uh, received funding uh, in March 2019. And on the 8th of March, uh, Minister Marie opened up uh, ablution facilities as well as changing facilities at the Stephen Regan uh, facility out in Mitchell's Plain. Um, it restores dignity to, to the netball players um, as they, they do not need to change uh, out in the open. They are now have new change rooms and new ablution facilities that uh, they would be able to use. We also transferred 717,000 rand to Lanesburg municipality on, on the 19th of October uh, last year, and that was to assist at the JJ Ellis uh, 
um, for the upgrading of the netball courts and surrounding sport fields. And then the other municipalities I will just mention is Naya received an allocation, Cape Agulhas municipality received an allocation, um, Hesequa municipality, Stana, Langeberg, um, and then Lanesburg, as I said earlier. So in terms of the of the facility part of the legacy, um, we have uh, rolled that out after having a consultation with the Netball West Fraternity, and uh, these uh, towns were, were targeted because that is where the league games of Netball uh, are played over weekends when the league takes place. So we have now rolled that out and the transfers have started and uh, the tender process uh, to assist with the upgrade and construction of new courts will, will then kick, kick off. On 22nd February last month, um, we, Minister Marie uh, also introduced a new Isi Corsa netball book that is part of the legacy relating to the social part of the Netball World Cup. And uh, that was then launched. Uh, it's the first time that the uh, laws of Netball has been translated into Isikor. And it follows on the ones that the department did with chess and cricket. And uh, we will be continuing with that specific initiatives. Um, Mr. Tabu Tutu uh, from our department uh, also negotiated a legacy program related to coaching with um, with the netball western cape so we will be in partnership with the netball structures rolling out training to coaches um, as well as within the club development uh, program as well so it's an extensive program but uh, we believe that it will assist uh, netball uh, in the future thank you mr H Thank you. Thank you London. Uh, maybe we can move to Cecilia next and then Namaza and then Jackie can come in last. Need to do that. Thank you, that. you HRD. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Chair and members and colleagues. I will start with the question on the delays with the infrastructure and the funding. We had funded two infrastructure projects uh, in Kanaland, a smaller modular library for 1.6 million, and in Swalendam, we're funding a big new library for 12 million. Yes, there were delays. Um, so the construction sector is now open so we're hoping that quite a bit will be done by june but if they do not spend that funding they will request for rollover and we've never had a request for infrastructure project rollovers um, rejected so they usually do get because the project's already ongoing and then with regards to the support to the rural library we have seven regional offices that are spread across the province to support our rural libraries. Um, they're from the West Coast, Van Rijnstorp in, in Beaufort West, everywhere. And we work very closely with them. We also assist the smaller rural libraries with the appointment of EPWPs to assist them. Um, also IT cadets where we can to help them with the internet access where the public comes. Um, so yes, we work very closely with our rural libraries in that regard. With regards to the Rural Library Connectivity Project, currently we have 229 libraries on board at the end of this financial year, and we provide um, around 1,400 um, actual computers in these 229 libraries for free internet access to our communities. And then with regards to the question about vandalism and the libraries that have been broken into, because they are operated by municipalities, uh, municipalities are supposed to ensure the building as well as the uh, our stock that's in there. So we don't have a line item especially for that. It's usually covered by the municipalities through their insurance policies. And then the changes in the way libraries been managed um, and going forward, we have moved much more online with regards to providing um, our public librarians online training. We have started and we almost finished with um, procuring an online books uh, platform, which will be rolled out to the whole of the, the province. Um, we have been given 1.5 million from provincial treasury to do external research or to get external consultants to research a better service delivery model for libraries so that we can um, find a better sustainable way to to provide funding to municipalities. Uh, I, I believe those are all the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Namaza. 
Good afternoon, uh, Chairperson. Thank you, HOD uh, uh, and members. Um, the announcements uh, with regards to enterprise content management, um, they differ. Some will, uh, the funding will only be for the first year when it's, it's introduced, the, the, the big amounts. Uh, if I can just mention that uh, the planned enhancements th uh, for the uh, next coming year is the advanced electronic signatures uh, that we also uh, talked about earlier on. Um, this one will definitely go beyond the 2021-22 financial year because we are looking at providing advanced electronic signatures for most of the uh, employees of the Western Cape government. Um, in total, currently, there's about 22,000 employees, but definitely not all of them need to use the, the system and have their signatures, but a, a huge number uh, does need that. So it will definitely be uh, over the uh, three years and maybe beyond when we uh, 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 on board other new uh, staff members. The second uh, announcement is on connected uh, workspaces. This is uh, now, because now we've in implemented on business units, uh, the enterprise content management, but we are looking at uh, connecting workspaces where all officials are working in a similar uh, environment. For example, it's, I'll make an example of supply chain management. Um, they all can share uh, documents and, and be part of a, of a team. And all the documentation, if, if there is a bid, for example, every everything starting from the uh, specifications up until the end when the bid is, 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 is implemented and during the course of implementation, all that information will then be integrated in, in, in this area. So that one as well, um, it, it, it will, there, a lot of money will be spent at the beginning of the project. But just also to say uh, the reason why also in the outer years we will have minimal amounts that we need to pay. As we add the other departments, uh, then those we will have to pay uh, uh, for, for enhancement in those departments. Um, the other enhancement is the electronic forms. Uh, which we uh, plan to do for internal and external purposes. Uh, just for example, for internal, I can say the the trip authority forms that we normally do, so that we don't we don't fill in the the paper based form. It's done electronically, and some of the applications that come from the members of the public. Uh, that the forms that need to be filled, uh, that is that will then be the benefit for the external use. Um, the the other announcement is the supplier invoice uh, solution, uh, which need to be uh, uh, um, advanced again uh, this year. This is the um, the enhancement so that the it's easy to track invoices inside the department so that we meet the 30 days uh, uh, um, target for uh, for paying off invoices. The other one is my track further enhancement, which is the correspondence tracking. It's been there, but we we, we need to uh, uh, enhance it. Uh, that's where now correspondence tracking, for example, the submissions and and letters and memos and and information that is uh, needs signatures uh, internally, it can it can be processed through this system easily. So some of these, as I indicated, uh, won't need a lot of money beyond 2021, 22, but there will be a, a minimal amount that is paid. Thank you. Thank you very much, Namaza. Uh, Jackie Bo. Thank you very much. So two responses needed from me. The first is just broadly on the uh, what we're doing around youth unemployment. So we are the champions for the youth service in the province and coordinating opportunities for 18 to 25 year old young people in their first work experience and training and, tra and progression into studies or work. Last year we had this last year we've had just under 500 youth on the program and we'll have just under a thousand youth on the program going forward. Um, the biggest program within that we run a number of streams, but the biggest program is year beyond academic support in primary schools, which works on literacy and numeracy with grade three and four learners. But there are a number of other programs that also promote literacy, the at home learning program, which is focused on working with learners who have are absent from school and at risk of dropping out or have dropped out of school. And also a library reading program, which we're doing together with library services, which is kicking off in the in the new year. So and with library services, So I think that that's currently been run in the city. We're now taking it out of the city to and some of the um, rural districts as well to see how we can make that work. 
Um, I think the key thing around that program is in addition to extending social services um, to residents in the Western Cape, the young people also get a lot of support. They each get a mentor and they get a lot of support to develop their CV, their work readiness skills, and then support to pathway into either studies or work with the target of 80% of them either studying full-time or working. And um, historically, we've met that target and we hope to meet it in this coming year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chairperson, back to you. I found my unmute button. Thank you so much, HOD. Uh, members, um, I have noted in the chat function when I noted member Van Vogel raising her hand. I just want to double check. Member Van Vogel, is that a question that you wish to ask or you want to bring anything to our attention? No, no, Chair, no, it's by mistake, but I, I want to ask on your next pages. Thank you, Chair. Okay, that is duly noted. Members, in, in order for us to swiftly move forward, um, once a hand goes up, I will request once you have asked your question, if you are able to lower your hand, um, I will chat in the message function box. Um, should I need any clarity from a member there as well? Members, we have tabled the first 10 pages. We dealt with pages 693 to 703. I will now, firstly, for clarity and for us to be um, deeglik, um, deeglik te wees, um, is there any follow-up question or a point of clarity that any member has based on the replies that we have received? I will note member Bosman, member Barnes, member Van Vogel, if your... If you are Mine able to lower your hand, if it's not a point of clarity based on an, an initial question. So, Member Bosman okay, Chair. and Member Barnes, in that order, regarding questions that were already posed and clarity seeking um, comments. Over to Member Bosman and then Member Barnes. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, I just want to confirm that I heard correctly that 1.6 million is going to be spent to build a small satellite library in the Cullinant municipality. If that is correct, I'd like to know whether the municipality is going to be building this library or whether it's going to be built by the Department of Public Works. If the municipality is building it, um, I'd like to know what the um, measures are in place to ensure that it's actually built, uh, because we know um, under the um, I want to say traumatic leadership that the current municipality has been for the last months. A lot of money has gone missing um, under the current uh, the, the arrangement that Cunland had up until last week, um, Wednesday. So we just need to understand whether that municipality has been given that money. Are they still getting it? And if they are, are they building it themselves or is it going to be bought by another arm of government? Thanks, Chair. Member Barnes? Thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity once again. I think a question that I asked earlier remains unanswered, the one that I was asking about the aspiring writers. And I made an example of a writer in Merville in my question. I would like to know, Chairperson, where are they getting this help? In, in a case, let's say, for example, the writer already has a book. Is What is the possibility also for the department to absorb such books and get them into our own libraries by buying it from the aspiring writers. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Barnes. Members, those are the clarity seeking questions based on the first pages that were tabled. I will allow for the HOD and any official to now reply to the follow-up questions. Thereafter, we will then swiftly move to the next pages I will identify as soon as this round is over. So over to the department. 
Thank you very much, Chairperson. I think Cecilia, uh, the first question, if you could answer the second elements of the second question, also actually for you about the process for libraries uh, to, to take up books from various authors. Maybe you can just talk about how that process works, uh, the fact that you have a selection committee and, and how that works. Maybe we can just inform the committee. And then if there's if guy wants to add anything about aspiring writers, he's free to do so. But let's start with Cecilia. Cecilia. Thank you, HRD. Um, Member Bosman, that is correct. It's 1.6 million that's been transferred in two, two transfers. It was um, 650, and then this financial year we gave 1 million. Uh, what happens is we sign a MOU with the municipality, um, and it's been very successful in the, all the other municipalities, that we transfer the funds to them, and they do the whole process of the tender and the building. So what happens is we've got a dedicated section within our library service that goes through the whole process with them that that that's on the project team but the the funds are lying with the municipality to implement the project um so that's how we usually do it and with regards to the process for libraries with um authors we are the library service has got a selection policy where we're trying to spend up to 80% of our budget on local publications and local authors. So we have a, a, a system that's been approved where either local authors or publishers drop the books off at library service and we either review them and we have a selection committee with all our librarians and public libraries and then we purchase the books um, and, and the amount of copies as the libraries choose. We also have specialist select selection members um, within library service that make sure that we do um, purchase, you know, the important works out there and make sure that we do keep to our level of spending for local authors. We're also working this year with or th that we're rolling out in the new financial year where we're working with municipalities, where we are rolling out a program to assist um, local authors um, in just helping them, in training them, in giving them advice about how to publish their own books, uh, you know, where to get the ISBN and so on, so, um, just to assist them to, to get their books published as well. So that will be rolled out in the next financial year. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Edmund, I think we've answered it. Anish, is there anything you want to add? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Just to add that um, in the current call for funding in the Arts and Culture Department, uh, we've got new categories, there's six of them, and one of them is called Books and Press, and there we fund poetry writing, um, writers' grants, uh, creative writing, autobiographies, children's literature, folklore, short stories, book fairs, literary magazines, and even support um, uh, with, with subsidies for publishing houses that may be struggling. So that that we're already uh, doing in this year, uh, in the in the upcoming year. But we also, with the um, pressure that the uh, South African book industry is under, um, especially for local writers, are increasing the percentage of local content in our libraries. Uh, at the moment, with the budget that we have, we spend at least 60% uh, on local content, and we are increasing this to 65% and possibly to 70, depending on the availability of material. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Back to you. Thank you so much. That's duly noted. Uh, Member Barnes, Member Bosman, your hand is still raised. Uh, Chair, I've got a follow up on my follow up. If that's allowed. Oh, okay, let's. I will allow that follow up and then we will then conclude on this portion. You may go, sir. We are here to engage. Thanks, Chair. I just want to ask um, the 1.6 million that's been given for this um, additional satellite library in the municipal area of Kanan. Um, if the municipality is um, expected to run a tender process and expected to, to do the entire um, process on its own, how far does that 1.6 million go if we think about the cost of tenders, the cost of um, buying a suitable facility, whether mobile or whether retrofitting an existing facility, and then still putting meaningful resources in this library, such as books? How far do we expect the 1.6 million to go? 
um, and what type of library are we putting together for 1.6 million, considering that in the city of Cape Town, a library is built um, at considerably more cost than that. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Thank you so much, Member Bosman. Uh, I'll now see, see the department. Thereafter, I will open up quest uh, questions on pages 704 to 720. So over to the department. Cecilia. Chair. Yes, um, Member Bosman, we have um, specifications of small library, medium libraries and large libraries, and it's costed. And in the past, um, you know, so usually a modular, a small modular library is usually 500,000. And, and this one is a little bit bigger, so it's 1.6 million. It will go quite far. That is just for the infrastructure. The books that we'll be putting into the library, um, that will come from a different budget. So we are, when, when we have the business plan and we know that we are going to build a new library or a satellite library or smaller library, we already start the collection process and we build up a collection so that when they're open, that it is filled with, um, with the relevant resources. But that has been costed and that should cover the small library as per the specifications. Thank you, Chair. Back to you. Thank you so much, members. Like I've indicated, we will now deal with pages, let me, pages 704 to 720. I have noted member Winfwagel. Any other members? 704 to 720. I note member Kama, member Barnes, in that order. Member Van Vogel. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, um, my question is on page 705, Heritage, uh, the last sentence, uh, paragraph three. Um, and thirdly, Robben Island Prison Landscape, the department has initiated feasibility studies for the first two sites in this regard. What are the details of these sites and how much is budgeted for it and when will the studies be completed? Then, Chair, on page 716, 716, transfer to public entities. Um, what are the reasons for the high decrease in the budget for Cultural Commission and what is going to be the impact of these cuts? Then, Chair, on page 722, uh, uh, what work has been done with regards to the PL, P, RLHR interventions in the province? Then, yeah, that, that's my questions. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, Member, member Kama. Or is it, um, yes, Member Kama? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, I, 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 Chair, I didn't follow up earlier because I saw that my follow-up would be linked to a question that I want to ask on page seven or six. Uh, I, I, on the on the funding, Chair, uh, that because here it says the funding is made available for uh, to sp sport federations that have applied and 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 qualify for. Uh, the allocation. Uh, now, what I want, what I want to 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 understand, uh, Chair, is uh, with regards to this funding, I want to check uh, uh, the number. I, I know maybe the department might not have it now, but if we can get the number of sports federations that were were funded in the in the in the in the in the firstly the ten. Uh, High meta precincts in the province, and 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 secondly, the 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 rural uh, uh, far rural uh, uh, communities. Uh, if we can we can get that number of federations that were funded and 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 and, and previously, and 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 perhaps uh, it links to the question which was not clearly answered, Chair, when I said um, what uh, what uh, amount have we budgeted. 
uh, which uh, the department is targeting these particular uh, areas because this department has a role and the premier had said that the department will play a a, a, a role in developing uh, i mean in assisting because in assisting in, in the creation of safer communities the other question that i have on the very same page chair in terms of club club development um as uh, the department says currently you have about 180 clubs that have been supported through the club development program uh, i want to check if there are any plans of increasing the number of clubs that are, are supported and 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 perhaps why was the number reduced uh, uh, from the previous uh, 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 for the past few years and and if the committee can be later f uh, uh, finished with details of clubs that were funded uh, in the last financial year and 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 how much each uh, received the last question that i have chair is on uh, 710 and, and 22 uh, when you talk about your earmarked allocations on your sports for on your support for arts and culture organizations i want to check if if we have details of organizations that were supported also there and what are the uh, what what are the details uh, uh, of other arts and culture groups in in communities that were supported by the department? Thanks, uh, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Kama. Members, um, seeing that we are on this note, um, remember later on, members, regarding um, our resolutions, we would be able to include any recommendations, requests for further information within our minutes as well. Um, should the department not have all the information today? But I will allow for the department to indicate if that is the case in this particular um, question, but I will now see member bounds. Thank you, member Kama. Chair, I'm just trying to check. I think you said we can ask from 704 to 720, but I see the members are asking to 722. So it means we can continue. Member Barnes, I think they are taking jumping, the sporting jump a little bit too far. So thank you. We will now strictly assist um, the committee as well as assist the department to stick with in the parameters of the page numbers that we have identified. Members, you would understand that the officials are needing to not only track um, the specific page number, but we want to see how we can get through the entire vote in a systematic way. So Member Barnes, thank you so much for highlighting that. We will strictly stay with um, 704 until 720. Then I'll go with the next round. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Barnes. Over to the department. Thank you very much. If uh, Colette, um, uh, between you and Guy, if you can answer the question on the Robin Island uh, prison landscape and the question on the RHRHR, and then there was also a question about the Cultural Commission. Maybe Guy or Jane, maybe Guy, uh, maybe just check that. And then Lyndon, if you, between you and Tabo, you can answer the question that was asked about sport federations and you know uh, the precincts of course with the precincts uh, you may want to also focus on the mod centers uh, maybe through Paul to just talk about that uh, um, you know uh, because obviously we are based according to federations and sometimes they're not always in all the areas so maybe you want to talk about that and then club development table you can answer a question uh, on club development uh, 180 clubs why did we reduce and then I think the details of the clubs funded chairperson that we obviously we will give you that uh, that answer in writing. Can we go from there? Thank you very much, um, HOD, and good afternoon to the chairperson and members and colleagues. Um, with regards to Member Van Forthel's question on clarity with regards to the resistance and liberation heritage route, um, to note that this is a national project um, of the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture and the Western Cape Province has a, forms part of a chapter of the national project. Three sites have been initially identified to form part of the project. Um, and these sites, just for clarity, are firstly the Tissandira Fira, commemorating the early legacies of resistance by the indigenous people in South Africa. 
Then there is the Mandela route to freedom, which comprises a few sites, and it comprises of the entrance and exit at the Drakenstein Correctional Facility, which is the former Victor Fastad prison, and then the Madiba House at the Correctional Facility and the City Hall and Grand Parade. And then thirdly, the site of the Robben Island prison landscape. Now, the department has received funding from the National Heritage Council, which is the implementing agent of DSAC, National DSAC, for this, um, for this project. And they have transferred uh, $500,000 for the Tissendira Pira project, which is to do a feasibility study. And then an equal amount was also given for, a, for the Road to Freedom legacy, Road to Freedom sites related to Nelson Mandela, but this feasibility study only focuses um, on the Madiba House and um, the scope of the project around it. So the 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 um, the projects at the moment, in terms of feasibility, are only related to two sites, um, and the budgets received from National Heritage Council are only related at this point in time to the feasibility of the two sites. Um, the funds have been committed, and they will be also will be rolled over from the, um, yeah, from, from this, well, they were rolled over from the last financial year to this financial year. And these feasibility studies have been well underway um, with the service provider that has been appointed to, to do the studies. Um, if there's any further particulars that uh, Member Vinfocher would like to know, I'm happy to, um, to provide further response on that. Thank you, colleague. Uh, okay. uh, London. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, Guy. Guy. Yes. Guy, come in. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. And just to say, the feasibility study for the Nelson Mandela uh, uh, or Madiba House is pretty much done. Um, we've we've received the final draft, and the one for uh, Tissim de Refira um, is, is slightly behind because it started later. But uh, we, we will conclude uh, both studies by end of April. The cultural facilities suffered quite immensely during the lockdown because apart from not being able to open because of the regulations in place, they also then were used as, as uh, um, isolation sites. Um, as a result of that, who we were unable to generate any income, which normally then goes towards um, maintenance of these sites. Uh, we then increased their budget uh, just to be able to account for this uh, shortage in, in, in revenue uh, so that we are able to maintain them uh, and, and be ready to open when the time comes. With respect to the arts organizations, there are many. They, this year we funded 75 arts organizations and um, we could provide the full list of all the arts organizations that we funded this year. They cover the length and breadth of the province from large to uh, um, small organizations. And yeah, we, we're sitting on 75 and we have a, a, a target of, of just over 64 for the, the incoming financial year. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, Brendan. Um, thanks, uh, Chair. In terms of the question relating to the federations, um, the federations in the Western Cape, uh, that applies for funding normally numbers about 140. Uh, last year we we gave over 130 that that qualified. This year it appears the number is 142, but we still are waiting all the audited financial statements before we get to the final figure. Now what has happened is that the federation. Um, are grouped within a district perspective. So in terms of the metro and the five districts, there would be, for instance, a, a, a football association in Cape Town, which would be south of Cape Town, and the same would be in West Coast and all the other areas. So they are not based specifically in the 10 areas. In the 10 areas in the safety plan, there would be clubs related, uh, affiliated to those specific federations. So in our case, um, we have... Uh, Cape Town, as a metro, has the most federations. Um, they have over 50 federations that are active within the Cape Town metro because of the amount of, of people and of the number of codes that are available. In the other areas, Eden is, is the 
most uh, uh, active. Eden also has close to 48 uh, federations that are active. And we also have Overberg that has about 15. Uh, West Coast that has about 13 federations. And in the Cape Winelands has about 25 that are active. So Central Karoo uh, has about uh, nine or 10 that are active uh, um, within the sport arena. So that is the divide at the moment. It is not club-based, but but district-based in terms of federations. And um, I, we'd be quite happy to send uh, Member Van Vogel the uh, names of all the federations uh, that we that we have supported. Um, and those federations in the Cape Town Metro, they in spe specifically would have some of their programs uh, running in some of those particular areas uh, as well. And in those areas that is that has been set out in the in the safety plan, we also have mods. Uh, mod centers as well as neighboring schools and uh, we could have uh, Mr. Paul Hendrick uh, talk to that HOD. Thank you. Thank you. OK, Paul. Job uh, followed uh, up. The, the, yeah, the, um, the mod centers, we have about 85 mod centers in the rural areas and 96 mod centers in the metro. Then across the province, we have 134 neighboring schools, of which about 50% are um, neighboring schools, the rural areas, and split with the with the um, metro. And then we also have 20 recreation centers, of which 17 are rural based. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tabo. Club development. Uh, thanks, HOD. Uh, Member Kama, uh, with regards to club development, club development is funded through our conditional grant, the conditional grant that we received we received from the Department of of Sport, Arts and Culture, our national department, uh, and uh, what it is also governed and determined by the framework that we receive that is that is uh, discussed and 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 signed off by the national DG. Uh, in, that, in that framework, it determines uh, what we need to use that uh, framework for. Uh, the framework will then uh, look at uh, transportation of clubs, capacity building, provision of equipment and attire. Uh, and uh, because we receive this uh, uh, funding from, from the national department, you you would you would have seen in the last three four years the 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 conditional grant budget has been cut uh, every year, and because of those cuts, it it impacts on the number of clubs that we that we we, we get into the program, and uh, the determination of those clubs is not determined by the department. Uh, we have a partnership with uh, with the confederation and also the, the the federations that nominate these clubs into the program, and they these clubs are in the program for a period of three years, so it is really difficult for the department to increase these clubs because of the budget cuts that we receive almost every year, so that is the reason why we it, it is impossible. Uh, impossible for us to increase these clubs. And uh, 83, 83 clubs within uh, on that 180 that we have come from rural areas as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chairperson, back to you. Members and the department, thank you so much. Members, may I also request just to remind you at this time regarding request for information, if you are able to, to jot that down as the department even replies regarding additional information, and if you are able to then escalate that directly to our procedural officer, so we are able to also capture that in our, in our request for information. I see Member Barnes and Member Kama. Do you have a follow up pertaining to the questions that you've posed? No, Chair, I'm up for the new questions. I, I do. I, I, I do. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, if I may. You may go ahead, sir. No, thanks, uh, Chair. Chair, my 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 follow up is 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 exactly on 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 this question because. 
I think part of the mandate of the department or the role that the department plays, is, as, as the HOD had said earlier, is, is on the issue of building social cohesion. Now, and, 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 and I'm linking this, I don't want the, the department also chair to feel as if I'm asking community safety questions. Uh, but I, 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 because the, 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 I think there's also issues of safety cabinet and whatnot. And the, the, the government has said that certain departments will play different roles. Now I want to check if do we have any engagement uh, with these federations in these specific areas that I talk about, which have high levels of crime uh, uh, in, 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 in your other uh, uh, areas in terms of uh, what, what support can the department uh, give to this? I, I want to, to hear of an active role that the department is now having and the, the, the change, because there has to be a change in approach if you are to say you are going to use also the department in terms of uh, assisting in fighting the social ills that are connected to crime. And now this being the Department of Sports, Arts and, uh, 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 Arts and Culture. Now, I, I want to understand, Chair, as to do we have an engagement uh, that would with these federations in these different areas that would lead us to having a, 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 a targeted approach in assisting them in terms of funding, in terms of improvement, like even in our facilities, uh, when we transfer funds to, to, to the municipality, do we also, uh, uh, with those funding, like how now we're told that National does with their funding, do we say that we are interested in the development uh, uh, of this particular, because if you check in the metro, most of these areas that have high crime levels, the sporting facilities become the grounds of uh, 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 these criminal elements because these facilities are no longer used. They are no longer uh, where if there was grass, it was there about seven or ten years ago. Uh, so I want to understand what effort is the department giving uh, uh, on a different approach now in, in, in terms of targeting these areas of uh, high crime uh, 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 areas. Uh, so, Josh, thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Kama. I will hand over to the department. Thereafter, we will then move on with the further pages in vote 13. Okay, Chairperson, uh, thank you very much. I think maybe maybe to just answer uh, the question uh, is, is mainly, mainly to be able to say that, I mean, we work with federations at one level, um, and we support, enable, and facilitate sport federations to deliver uh, their product. We're not the implementers in that sense of a particular, because they like experts, too, although we do have experts in programs um, to let them actually implement. So if you look at the club development program and you also ask where are those, where are those clubs being developed, we can probably provide that kind of information. So in other words, uh, is this related directly to areas of high crime rate? I cannot give quick the data just and give it to the committee like that, but I think that's something we can go look at uh, as a department and give you that information. Clearly, we are supporting federations that do operate within those 10 areas. But uh, we can provide a written answer, perhaps, uh, Chairperson, in relation to that detail, because we also got not only the Cloud Development Program, it'd be the sport federations that do various training programs in these, in these areas. Then in the MOD Program and Neighborhood School, we also would have in each of those areas, a few. Uh, that's a detail we can perhaps send um, uh, to the committee. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, HOD. That will be highly appreciated. It is noted. We will now, members, for purposes of moving forward in this regard, we have tabled the vote. We have tabled the first two parts. We will now highlight from page seven to one to 735, 721 to 735. I note member Barnes. Any other member? If not, member Barnes, you may go ahead. Uh, thank you, Jefferson. I'm on page 737, table A22 under catering departmental activities. What I want to know, Chairperson, is that what are the reasons for the high increase in the budget for catering? My second question on the same page 
under Western Cape Cultural Commission Table 822. What are the reasons for the high decrease in transfers to Cultural Commission and what is the impact of this decrease? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Member Barnes. Did you say 737? Both are on 737. Okay, duly noted. We will jump to the HOD. Um, I trust that you find that in order. Uh, Member Kama? 737. Uh, thank you. So thank we are you very dealing much. with 721 to 735. Seven. But we're jumping a bit. Yes, Member Kama, you may go ahead. Yes, yes. Thank, uh, thank you, Chair, for reminding me. I think I've, I've been guilty of jumping uh, uh, the pages. Uh, Chair, mine is on page uh, 730, uh, where, where the department on the earmark allocation, uh, it says there the SASREA compliance for or Philippi Stadium. Uh, I, I just want to check what is the number of if if the department uh, also check and provide later if they don't have the response now, but on the number of stadiums that are not uh, uh, compliant in the province, and what are the the plans to upgrade uh, such uh, stadiums, and and how much of this budget, if any, is going towards uh, upgrading uh, of the of the of the of the of the stadium? Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Kama. To the department, I will give over to the department. Uh, okay, Chairperson, we start with first perhaps with the stadium. If I could ask between London and Tavo, if they could perhaps just talk about the uh, answer to the stadium. And then I I had missed a question on uh, Kate 737. Uh, Kate Member Barnes, are you able to restate your question? Yes, Chair, I can repeat. On catering, I asked what are the reasons for the high increase in the budget for catering on page 737. That's table 82.2. 82 and the same, the, same, the same page, under the same table, the Western Cape Cultural Commission, what are the reasons for the high decrease in transfers to Cultural Commission and what is the impact of this decrease? That was my question, Chair. Thank you. Okay, Cultural Commission, let me just get that because I'm just on the page. Uh, okay, so let's, let's, Chairperson, um, maybe, maybe, um, let me just start off first with, uh, we're going to answer it the way, we're going to answer it in this way. I'll start off first with the question on the, um, on the catering, and in fact, indicate that it's a de facto a decrease, because this is why I opened, uh, the discussion earlier on um, to say that when we look at our budget, if you go to page 737 and look at catering departmental activities, this is under cultural affairs, but I'm just I'm just trying to establish a principle here, Chair. Uh, and then obviously the, the unit can answer further. But if you look at that, then last year for the appropriation, we had 1.362 million. If there was no COVID, we would have spent 1.362 million. This year, the amount is 1,036 million. So in fact, it's a decrease. But what is happening in these tables, the way it's been set up, is that you're comparing the revised estimates after adjustments. Uh, so it's probably not comparing apples with apples. And remember, we've been given the budget back. I did say it's a 3.7% decrease. So that's the reason a chairperson, the CFO, can can obviously add if she feels I must add something, but this is what you see. You're comparing the 200 to the 1,036, and it obviously looks like a massive increase, but in effect, if you take into account that we had to give up money and we never had a normal year, it's actually a decrease in the catering in the catering budget. Uh, uh, I asked Mr. Edmund if he can perhaps answer the question uh, on the Western Cape Cultural Commission and the, the decrease uh, there, because it did go from 2,149 to 600. Maybe can dig, uh, answer the question there, and then on Philippi Stadium, if uh, between London and Tower, they can answer those questions. See if you also free to come in at the end if you missed anything. Please go ahead. In that order, guy first. Thanks, Chair. It's it's similar to the earlier explanation. So the comparison is being made against the adjusted amount where we had to 
make some funds available to the Cultural Commission to support with the lost revenue in maintenance. But if you look at the earlier uh, uh, main appropriation, you'll see that the amount is very, uh, the difference between the two amounts is very small. But because we had to increase it, so the year on year increase from the uh, third adjustment to versus the um, the amount that is being projected for the new year, the amount seems high, similar to what HOD has just explained for, for, for catering. But CFO can add if I've missed anything. But that 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 was the purpose. Thank you, Chair. Okay, maybe before we go to Tabo and and and, uh, and uh, London, uh, CFO, uh, is there anything you perhaps just want to add to that? Um, thank you, HOD, and good afternoon, Chair and um, members and colleagues. So, I think it's covered. Um, maybe just to reiterate, the the fact that we are comparing um, 2021. 22 budget to the revised estimates um, it's not really comparing apples to apples so effectively if you look at um, catering for example if you look at and if you compare the 21 22 to the main budget which is the 1 million three hundred and sixty two thousand so effectively um, there is a decrease and not an increase okay so that's the one on the Cultural Commission, I think um, <clears throat> Guy has captured it quite nicely, but maybe just to add that um, the reason for the, the increase in the 2021 financial year was because of the loss of income. So obviously, um, with the Cultural Commission, we are highly reliant on the revenue because that is what we use to sustain the, um, the, the cultural facilities that we um, avail to communities to use. But similarly, if you look at by way of comparison, in the main budget, we had 561,000 um, allocated. And in the 21, 22 financial year, we have 600,000. So effectively, that is a year on year increase. OK, so if we then take away the fact that we had to support them so that we don't find ourselves in a situation where we cannot regard the Cultural Commission as a going concern. OK. Thank you very much for that. Maybe just to remind also before we move to London and Tabo, uh, Chairperson, through you, to just remind the committee, remember with, this, with the Cultural Commission, so there'll be loss of revenue for COVID, but we also have to hand over the facilities for quarantine isolation uh, in COVID-19, uh, one or two of them. So that's also also an issue. Okay, let's go on to uh, London and Tabo. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I will start off. Uh, the question related to, to Philippi, but also related to other stadia. Um, so just in terms of Schedule 5A and B of the Constitution, the local facilities, um, the facilities all belong to the local municipalities. Uh, so at this stage, Chairperson, I will not be in a position to, stay, to state uh, decisively which uh, stadia are Sassavia compliant or not. Uh, we would have to ask the, the individual municipalities uh, for that information. Uh, some some stadia are compliant, others are not. All depends on the size, the label, and what they have done in terms of, of getting themselves compliant. So, Chair, at this stage, uh, we will not be able to answer that question for the Western Cape information is within the mandate of the local. OK, thank you. Chairperson, back to you. Uh, we we are busy with the oh. Department of Transport. Um, HOD. Sorry, sorry, I just lost London. I thought he was done. But maybe my connection is poor. London, are you completed? Uh, are you back? Yeah. Yes, yes, I, I'm. Uh, I just stopped. Doctor Bauer, you are breaking up. We have the um, service. Okay. okay. Uh, perhaps Tabu can take the question further, HD. No, I think you've answered it. You said no. we will give them, we'll give a, we'll give a, uh, uh, some answered, explanation in the writing. Hmm? Oh. Tabu? Uh, uh, no, I'm saying he's answered, HD. He's answered it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Person, back to you. Members? We are doing fairly well for time. Please indulge that we will then conclude to move ahead. It is now 15.48 and where we are in our meeting, please allow us to, to, to go ahead in terms of the process for today. 
So I will table the last pages with regard to vote 13, and that is 735 to 750. Do I have any indication with regard to specific questions listed on those pages? I see member bonds. You may go ahead. Chair, yes, so, so I, chair, I know now I was speaking while I was muted. Apologies for that. Apologies for that. No um, problem. My, my question, yeah. Chair, is on page 739, uh, table 824, on property and payments. What I want yes. to know, Chair, is that do property payments include funds for upgrading sports infrastructure and what work is being done in this regard, especially in the rural communities? Also, Chair, I have noted that recently Bishop Lavis and the city having mm -hmm. a fight over transfer. Does it mean is this kind of tra transfer that they are actually arguing about on, 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 on renovation of, of, of stadiums? And then my second question, Chair, will be on page 746 on the transfer to local government table A4.4, transfer to local government by transfer grant type category and municipality. What is this transfer intended for? And what are the reasons for the high decrease to, of the transfer into the Metro? My last question, Chair, will be on page 750 on table 8.5.4. Within the central Karoo municipalities, what are the reasons for the decrease in the transfers to the central Karoo and what are the details of the projects that will be affected? I thank you, Chair. Okay, Chairperson, can we try? Over to you, Department. Okay, so um, uh, London and London, uh, page 735, which may be on our copy, I think 739, sorry, which on our copy is 741, but it's to do with the, it's under your uh, your situation there. Sport and recreation property payments went from 6.2 million to 2 million. Maybe you can just explain that. And then uh, Cecilia, this is to do with the grants in libraries, specifically to the city of Cape Town. It went from 10 million to 5.4 million. Maybe you can just speak to that. And then the last one uh, is also a sport and recreation question. That is on our page 752, but it's on 7450 for the committee. Um, that 717 that went to 300,000 for central Karoo municipalities. So between London and Cecilia, these are, the, these are your questions. Can you please go ahead. London, starting with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Chairperson. In our case, uh, at uh, sport and recreation in terms of our facilities, we work on an application basis. So on the 30th of June each year, we send uh, the application forms to all the municipalities in the Western Cape. They then have between 1 July and 30 September, a three month period in which they then can apply for specific funding for, for projects within the municipalities. Um, we then, once we obtain the applications from the municipalities, we then work together with the MIG office to see which of these municipalities are in compliance in terms of uh, some of the MIG projects, as well as our previous equitable share that we may have transferred to them. What then happens is that uh, we are then able to take a decision on, on who to support, uh, given our, our budget, because the budget for facilities is a very small budget. Uh, um, chairperson and, and members, uh, because of course facilities does not fall within um, our domain uh, in terms of the constitution. Uh, we also do not make money available for maintenance uh, projects. We only assist in the transfer of funds to upgrade or construct new facilities. And as you can hear, 1.5 to 2.5 million is very, very small money towards that. So, so we encourage most of the feder most of the municipalities to work with the MIG office, uh, and we play a role in, in helping the norms and standards uh, uh, at, at that level, as well as direct funding from national 
government that sometimes comes through as well. So in terms of, of the Central Karoo HOD, uh, it, it is dependent upon which applications have been received from the municipalities that we would then be able to consider. And that is why in our case, we were able to give uh, Lanesburg uh, funding uh, last year in our October uh, to, to assist at the JJ Ellis. So we work with the municipalities on an, on an application basis. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can I ask uh, uh, Cecilia if you can just turn on to the next question supported by CFO? Yes, the MLG as per allocation letter, it's it's actually increased to 11 million. So I'm just wanting to check the table with CFO if she can assist in that regard because it doesn't correspond to the allocation letter that we received. It looks like it might be incorrect. But the Metro Library grant has gone from 10 million to 11, 11 million. CFO? Um, sorry, are we on page 739? Page 748 on our copy. 748. Yes, okay. table A4.4. 748, which is 746. Um, no, no, it's our 748. So, so it's 746 in blue book, if you've got a blue book. Got it. Um, Cecilia, you were saying that? Cecilia, can you just Sorry, repeat? Sorry, Cecilia, I was saying that. The, with the allocation letter that we received, um, the Metro Library grant went to 11 million. It wasn't cut to 5.4. So I'm just a bit confused about this table. I wonder if we should get back to the committee and it might be an incorrect print. Um, it's not aligned to the allocation letter. Yeah. So there might have been a change to the allocation letter, Celia. So I think we perhaps just need to reconcile that. But we will um, provide feedback to the committee because as it is, at the time of concluding this process, we worked from a schedule received from your team. So we just need to obviously just reconcile to, to check that there were any changes post the, the, you know, the date that we concluded that and then we will deal with that. But we will give feedback to the committee. Okay, person, if I can ask that matter, maybe just uh, be put in the note that uh, Mr. Matthews sends to us. I will give you a written answer. Is that okay, Chairperson? Thank you so much. That has been um, noted. I just want to double check, Mr. Matthews, were you able to capture that one specifically? Uh, not entirely, Chairperson. So, um, if you just could repeat, then I'd make a note of it. But the department okay, also okay, makes so a just, made just of it. It's just for us to confirm, number one, the reason for the reduction from 10.5 million to 5.4 million uh, for the city of Cape Town, we just need to give the give the reasoning because there's just seems to be a little bit of difference uh, around the table. So we'll give we'll give a, a written answer to that question. If that is okay. Perfectly fine. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Thank you, HOD members. Table, table. Sorry, sorry, Chairman. This table A four point four. Thank you so much, HOD members. Member Barnes, your name is still up. Um, your hand is still up. Is there any further questions for this round? The entire vote has been tabled. No, Chair, I'm good, thank you. Person, uh, we've got silence now. So sorry, I muted myself. Oh, okay. uh, members, in the absence of any further questions, I consider that the vote has been deliberated on. We will then move forward in terms of our program, and I will then open up again if there's any member of the public that wishes to give any input 
or ask a question specific to the relevant vote. For the entire vote, all pages has been tabled. I see no, no hands. Mr. Wasim Matthews, are you able to confirm that there is indeed no public wishing to engage today? Uh, affirmative, Chairperson. There have been no, there's no indication of um, comments from the public. Thank you. Thank you so much for the confirmation. I will now allow for closing remarks from the minister as well as the HOD. I have on my timer HOD that we have 13 days and 20 hours, 9 minutes and 56 seconds with you still up until the end of your term with us. But let me first see the minister. Thank you, Chair. Well, it's counting for our HUD to leave us, but uh, and HUD, we will miss you. I've said it numerous times, but I want to thank, especially in these trying times, all who had hand in the success of our significant department and for innovatively facilitating the development, the preservation and promotion of our vibrant sport, arts and diverse culture landscape in the Western Cape. And I thank you, Chi, for you and your members for keeping us accountable always. Keep safe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Minister. Any remarks from you, HOD? Yeah, maybe just to thank the committee, uh, as I have done before, Chairperson, but maybe to thank you for the oversight, for the probing questions, uh, for keeping us uh, in the lane. Uh, I think these are all very important. Uh, thank you to all the members of the committee. I'm sure I'll see some of the members on the committee in the, in the education space, and I'm not leaving the Western Cape government, so I'll still be around in the education space. And then maybe to just thank my colleagues uh, for always being prepared for these engagements. Uh, we were able to answer the questions to the best of our ability. I uh, wish the committee well in its further deliberations, and uh, thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you so much, HOD. Last year, we were starting the jumping and we even jumped a gun in, in discussing the role that you have played and how the committee um, echoed sentiments made not only by the minister, but by many others. So thank you so much for your contribution. I'm the chairperson for education, Lorraine Bota, is in this meeting. So you will definitely be seeing some of us more often that side as well. To the HOD again, thank you so much, sir. Um, members, we will now um, remain online as we excuse the department. Um, HOD, if I think about all the chief directors, you can see the role that you have played and how capable um, they are in terms of not only um, your role as the HOD, but how that has filtered through the entire department. So thank you once again, but you are now kindly excused. Okay. Thank you, Minister and HOD and officials. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Minister. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, HOD. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Members, I checked my clock now. It is 4.02. Okay, there's one or two still leaving. It is now 4.02. And please allow us to continue so that we are able um, to attend to the committee business and the adoption of the reports. Um, in terms of the way forward, uh, meeting... Um, the resolutions and the request for information and recommendations. I will request that be emailed to a seam before Friday at 12. If there's any further request for information or resolutions that you wish for us to include in the minutes of today. I trust you find that in order.
but please allow me then to move over so that we are able to now table the report on the um, on the vote for cultural affairs and sport in the schedule to the Western Cape third adjustments appropriation bill. I mean, the interest of transparency, um, may I request our procedural officer to flight um, the following. Um, it is the Standing Committee on Community Safety, Cultural Affairs and Sport, having deliberated on the subject of vote 13, Cultural Affairs and Sport, in the schedule of the Western Cape Third Adjustments Appropriation Bill, referred to the committee in terms of Standing Rule 188, reports that it supports the vote or does not support the vote. Can I get any view from any committee member at this stage? Thank you, Mr. Matthews, that you have flighted um, the committee report. Members, or can you still hear me? Chair, we can hear you, but it seems that you can't see that we have raised our hands. So sorry. I uh, let me open up my tab here. I see Member Buota, and then I see Member Barnes. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. My proposal is that this committee supports this vote. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Member Buota. Member Barnes. Thank you, Chair. Using my my minority rule of vote, Chair Rule 90, I'm not supporting as the ANC this vote. Thank you. Thank you so much, Member Bosman. Chairperson, I want to second the proposal by Member Buerta that this committee supports. I think the department is trying to do very good work with very little money, and I wish them all the success in doing that. And I hope that our national government comes to the party to give some more money so that we can support all of those in the creative industries and cultural affairs and sports space. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Bosman. Members, with that, I trust that it would be in order that we, our report will then indicate that, as I read out earlier on, that the Standing Committee on Community Safety, word for word, like I read out earlier on, referred to the committee in terms of the Standing Rule 118, reports that it supports the vote. Furthermore, it will then register the minority view in terms of standing rule 90 that the ANC does not support the vote. Thank you so much, members. The report is now duly adopted. We will move on to the second. This is the full schedule to the Western Cape Appropriation Bill 2021. The Standing Committee on Community Safety, Cultural Affairs and Sport, having deliberated on the subject of Vote 13, Cultural Affairs and Sport, in the schedule to the Western Cape Appropriation Bill, referred to the committee in terms of Standing Rule 118, reports that it supports the vote or does not support the vote. I see Member Bota and Member Bosman. Thank you very much, Chair, and I concur that this is a department that has, with little money, they have to, um, in Afrikaans spreek woordelik, moet hulle a haas uit die hoed uit haal to make it work. So, I propose that this committee supports this vote. Thank you so much, Member Bota, Member Bosman. Chair, I wanted to second that proposal. I actually wanted to be the proposer, but I see Member Barnes' hand is up. So I suppose we must allow Member Barnes first to note her view. Um, is Member Barnes going to support the vote? Over to you, Member Barnes. I think of so, course, Chair. Chair. Of course, Chair, he knows I'm not going to support the vote. <laughs> Using my minority rule, Chair. I won't be supporting this vote on behalf of the ANC. Thank you very much, Chair. Now Member Bosman can second on me. Thank that, you. That's duly noted, Member Bosman. Chair, I do want to agree with Member Boita that a rabbit has to be pulled out of the hole every year because we are so disappointed when the Minister of Finance in the National Assembly makes his budget available and the cultural affairs and credit. 
Member Van Vogel, we are about to conclude a very well structured and run committee meeting. May we continue in this vein? Um, as you wrap up, Member Bosman. Yeah, but don't allow people to make speeches. There will be time for that. I'm not making a speech, Member Van Vogel. I'm motivating my support for the proposal by Member Lorraine Porter. You may continue, Member Bosman. Chairperson, with that, um, I'm going to say that I second the proposal by Member Water, and I do hope that in the next year that the National Minister of Finance will really think about the creative arts sector as much as they think about SAA. Thank you so much, Members. The report is being flighted. The Standing Committee, like I read into the record earlier on, that the bill was referred to the committee in terms of Standing Rule 118, reports that it supports the vote as it's indicated on the screen at the moment. Furthermore, in accordance with Standing Rule 90, the African National Congress expressed its minority view not to support the vote. Members, the report is now duly adopted. Like Member Van Vogel said, we will have time in the House further to engage and to debate on the specific votes. But thank you once again. But like I stated on earlier as well, I trust that that members would be able to forward any recommendations or requests for information on or before Friday, 12 o'clock, to Mr. Wasi Matthews, our procedural officer, who diligently supports our committee. Thank you also to Mr. Ben Daza, as well as all the IT support um, that's in the committee. Thank you so much. I trust that there is no further comment from any member or any question. Thank you so much, members. Uh, this meeting, uh, Mr. Wasi Matthews, just to double check, I am able to adjourn the meeting now. Uh, yes, Chairperson, you may do so. Chair, before thank you, you have... today. Thank you so much, Member Bota. I just want to say thank you very much for your leadership in this um, meeting this afternoon and thank you to Mr. Wasim Matthews for the logistics. Thank you so much Member Bota. It is highly appreciated. Members please go well, please keep safe and I hope to see you all safe and in person very soon. Thank you. Thank you Chair. Thank you Chair. Thank you.